The casting process for the 1970 movie, There Was a Crooked Man, was a careful selection of experienced actors who could bring depth to their roles. The film's lead, Kirk Douglas, was a natural choice due to his established career and ability to portray complex characters. The director, Joseph L. Mankiewicz, was keen on Douglas's talent and personally requested his involvement. The role of Paris Pittman Jr., the cunning and resourceful inmate, was given to Henry Fonda. Fonda was chosen for his distinctive screen presence and his talent for playing both heroic and villainous characters. His chemistry with Douglas was evident during their initial meeting and was further solidified during screen tests. The supporting cast was assembled with equal care. Hume Cronin, an experienced character actor, was cast as the warden, Lopeman. His ability to balance authority and vulnerability made him a perfect fit for the role. Warren Oates, known for his work in westerns, was cast as Ed Beasley, a role that allowed him to showcase his comedic timing. The casting of Margaret Witcherly as Ma Pittman was a nod to her extensive career in Hollywood. Her inclusion added a sense of authenticity and depth to the film. The young actor, Mike Kellen, who played Coy Cavendish, was chosen for his ability to portray a menacing yet sympathetic character. The casting process for There Was a Crooked Man was a careful balance of experience, talent, and chemistry. Each actor was chosen for their ability to contribute to the film's complex narrative and character dynamics. The result was a star-studded cast that brought depth and intrigue to this Western comedy. Joseph L. Mankiewicz, the director of There Was a Crooked Man in 1970, was known for his clever dialogue and character-driven narratives. He brought a theatrical style to his films, often using long takes and complex dialogue scenes. Mankiewicz was influenced by the golden age of Hollywood and aimed to create intelligent, engaging stories. In There Was a Crooked Man, Mankiewicz focused on the character dynamics, creating a unique blend of comedy and drama. He worked closely with the cast, including Kirk Douglas and Henry Fonda, to develop well-rounded, believable characters. Mankiewicz's attention to detail and commitment to storytelling were evident in his collaboration with the crew as well, ensuring that every aspect of the film served the narrative. Mankiewicz's directorial vision was to create a film that was both entertaining and thought-provoking. He used his signature style to bring the story to life, employing long, uninterrupted takes and intricate dialogue scenes. By focusing on character development and narrative, Mankiewicz crafted a film that has stood the test of time. The 1970 movie There Was a Crooked Man is a classic Western film with a star-studded cast, led by Kirk Douglas and Henry Fonda. The movie tells the story of a notorious bandit who is caught and sent to a tough prison, where he must navigate the dangerous and unpredictable world of convicts and guards. This movie has stood the test of time due to its enduring qualities, such as its sharp humor, shocking twists, and sad moments. It's a true symbol of the Hollywood Western genre, with stunning landscapes, thrilling action scenes, and unforgettable characters. One of the most memorable aspects of this movie is the performance of Kirk Douglas, who plays the cunning and charismatic bandit with charm and wit. His portrayal of the character is both funny and captivating, making him a fan favorite. As you watch this movie, you'll discover many surprising and interesting facts about its production, the cast, and the Western genre as a whole. From shocking behind-the-scenes stories to sad trivia, there's no shortage of intriguing details to keep you engaged. We would love to hear about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie. Share your stories and memories in the comments below, and let us know who your favorite classic Hollywood actor in this movie is. Together, we can celebrate this enduring symbol of the industry and the timeless appeal of the Western genre. The 1970 movie There Was a Crooked Man was filmed in various locations, primarily in Mexico, standing in for the American Old West. The production team transformed the Mexican landscape into a realistic and convincing backdrop for the film's story. Set design played a crucial role in creating the movie's atmosphere. The film's director, Joseph L. Mankiewicz, worked closely with the art department to design and build detailed sets, such as the interior of a prison and the surrounding desert landscape. These sets helped to establish the film's tone and setting, immersing the audience in the world of the Old West. One of the logistical challenges of filming in Mexico was dealing with the harsh desert climate. The production team had to ensure that the cast and crew were well equipped to handle the heat and sandstorms that were common in the area. 
They also had to take extra care to protect the film equipment from the elements. To overcome these challenges, the production team employed several innovative techniques. For example, they used large tents to provide shade and protection from the sun for the cast and crew. They also used special camera equipment and filters to minimize the impact of sand and dust on the film. Another challenge of filming in Mexico was communicating with the local crew members who spoke primarily Spanish. The production team hired translators to help bridge the language gap and ensure that everyone could understand each other. Despite these challenges, the production of There Was a Crooked Man was a success. The movie's striking set design, realistic locations, and innovative techniques helped to create a compelling and entertaining film that continues to be enjoyed by audiences today. The 1970 movie There Was a Crooked Man boasts an impressive cast, including Kirk Douglas, Henry Fonda, Burgess Meredith, Hume Cronin, Warren Oates, John Randolph, and Alan Hale Jr. with such renowned actors, one might expect a serious western. However, the presence of John Randolph and Alan Hale Jr., along with the sitcom-style score, leaves viewers questioning the film's genre. Unfortunately, the movie is a disorganized jumble, failing to make the most of its talented cast. The film's focus on prison reform seems to cater to a progressive agenda, which may not appeal to all audiences. Among the cast, Warren Oates stands out, delivering a strong performance that keeps viewers engaged. Interestingly, the 1973 film The Slams, starring Jim Brown, shares similarities with There Was a Crooked Man, suggesting that the latter may have influenced the former. Additionally, Martin Gable's character, Warden Legoff, in Mel Brooks' Blazing Saddles bears resemblance to a character in There Was a Crooked Man, hinting at the influence of the film on later productions. As for Kirk Douglas' wardrobe, his attire is peculiar, wearing striped pants upon arrival at prison and a polka dot shirt during solitary confinement. While Douglas looks dapper for his age, Henry Fonda appears quite aged, being six years older than Douglas. In summary, there was a crooked man features an impressive cast, but its disorganized plot and progressive themes may not resonate with all viewers. War Notes' performance, however, is a highlight and the film's influence on later productions is noteworthy. The 1970 film There Was a Crooked Man features a score and soundtrack that complement the narrative and emotional tone of the movie. The music, composed by Billy Goldenberg, adds depth to the story of a cunning prison escapee, played by Kirk Douglas. Goldenberg's score is a blend of Western and dramatic elements, which perfectly captures the film's setting and plot. The use of guitars, harmonicas, and percussion creates a sense of the Old West, while the orchestral arrangements add tension and drama. In an interview, Goldenberg stated, I wanted the music to reflect the ruggedness of the characters and the harshness of the desert landscape. He achieved this by using dissonant chords and unusual instrumental combinations, which give the score a unique and memorable sound. The soundtrack also includes several popular songs of the time which helped to establish the film's historical context. These songs are used sparingly, however, and are always integrated seamlessly into the narrative. One of the most memorable musical moments in the film occurs during a tense standoff, where the sound of a ticking clock is heard in the background. This simple but effective technique adds to the tension and helps to build suspense. Overall, the score and soundtrack of There Was a Crooked Man are an integral part of the film's success. They enhance the narrative and emotional tone and help to create a rich and immersive cinematic experience. Charles Durning, a graduate of the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in 1948, featured in the 1970 film There Was a Crooked Man. Henry Fonda, his co-star, has been honored with a 37 cents USA commemorative postage stamp in the Legends of Hollywood series issued on May 20, 2005. Warren Oates, another actor in the film, played twin brothers in the 1965 film The Shooting and on the television series branded in the same year. These actors brought their unique experiences and talents to the set of There Was a Crooked Man, contributing to its storyline. One of the most iconic scenes in the 1970 movie, There Was a Crooked Man is the opening sequence where Paris Pittman Jr., played by Kirk Douglas, escapes from prison using a tunnel. The scene is directed with a sense of tension and excitement, with the camera angles emphasizing the danger and difficulty of the escape. Douglas's performance is energetic and charismatic, immediately engaging the audience's attention. The cinematography is also noteworthy, with the use of low-key lighting and tight shots creating a claustrophobic atmosphere. 
This scene sets the tone for the rest of the movie and establishes Paris Pittman as a cunning and resourceful character. It also highlights the theme of freedom versus confinement, which is explored throughout the film. According to director Joseph L. Mankiewicz, the opening scene was intended to be a hook to draw the audience in and establish the character's motivations. Another memorable scene is the final showdown between Pittman and prison warden Lopeman, played by Henry Fonda. The scene is shot in a wide open space with the camera capturing the vastness of the desert landscape. The contrast between the confined prison and the open desert emphasizes the theme of freedom and confinement. The performances of Douglas and Fonda are intense and dramatic, with the tension between the two characters building up to a climactic confrontation. Cinematographer James Wong Howe uses a variety of camera angles and movements to capture the intensity of the scene. The use of close-ups and medium shots emphasizes the character's expressions and body language, while the wide shots capture the vastness of the desert. According to Howe, the goal was to create a sense of visual drama that would complement the actor's performances. These iconic scenes have had a lasting impact on audiences and have contributed to the movie's enduring popularity. The opening escape scene is often cited as one of the most exciting and memorable moments in the film, while the final showdown between Pittman and Lopeman is regarded as a classic example of the Western genre's themes of justice and morality. The scenes have also been praised for their direction, performances, and cinematography, with critics and filmmakers alike acknowledging their influence on the movie industry. Hume Cronin, a distinguished figure in drama, was bestowed the O.C. in 1988 for his significant contributions. War Notes, celebrated for his character roles, had only four leading parts in his illustrious career. His most acclaimed lead role in Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia was a gift from director Sam Peckinpah in gratitude for his work in Ride the High Country and The Wild Bunch. Henry Fonda, a respected actor, played the S president twice and the son of a president once, as well as portraying a future president in Young Mr. Lincoln. His versatile acting skills were showcased in various roles throughout his career. The 1970 movie There Was a Crooked Man received mixed reviews, but had a significant cultural and social impact. The film's portrayal of a complex anti-hero, Woodward Lopeman, played by Kirk Douglas, challenged the traditional morality of Western films. Audiences were intrigued by this crooked character, who was not just a villain, but also a cunning and intelligent individual. The movie's theme of moral ambiguity resonated with viewers, contributing to discussions about the complexities of human nature. It subtly influenced pop culture by inspiring subsequent films with anti-hero characters who defied traditional moral standards. Moreover, There Was a Crooked Man was released during a time of significant social change. The early 1970s saw a shift in societal values, with a growing acceptance of moral ambiguity and complexity. The film's themes aligned with these changing values, making it relevant and relatable to contemporary audiences. The movie also contributed to cultural themes by showcasing a diverse cast, which was relatively progressive for its time. This diversity added depth to the film's narrative and characters, further enhancing its cultural and social impact. In summary, There Was a Crooked Man resonated with audiences due to its complex anti-hero, moral ambiguity, and diverse cast. It influenced pop culture by inspiring subsequent films with anti-hero characters and aligned with changing societal values, making it a significant cultural and social artifact of the early 1970s. Henry Fonda, known for his role in There Was a Crooked Man, had ancestors who originated from Genoa, Italy, and settled in upstate New York in the early 1600s. His paternal grandparents later moved to Nebraska. In preparation for his role in Yours, Mine, and Ours, Fonda spent a night on the USS Kitty Hawk in 1967. Alan Hale Jr., who also starred in There Was a Crooked Man, was a prolific actor on television. He had leading roles in at least three series, and made hundreds of guest appearances on other shows. His busy schedule showcased his talent and dedication to the acting industry. The 1970 movie There Was a Crooked Man received mixed reviews from critics. The film stars Kirk Douglas and Henry Fonda, with Douglas also serving as the producer. Douglas' performance was generally well received, with critics praising his charisma and energy. However, the convoluted plot and uneven pacing were criticized, Variety magazine described the film as an erratic, sometimes funny, sometimes tedious western, 
and noted that Douglas' performance is the best thing about the picture. The New York Times was more critical, calling the film a confused and confusing Western, and stating that Kirk Douglas gives it what life it has. Despite the mixed reviews, There Was a Crooked Man was a moderate box office success. It received no major award nominations, but its box office performance and the positive reception of Douglas' performance were still significant accolades for those involved in the film. The film's success and Douglas' performance were important for his career as he was able to continue producing and starring in films throughout the 1970s. The film's box office success also helped to solidify the Western genre's popularity in the 1970s. In summary, There Was a Crooked Man received mixed reviews, but Kirk Douglas' performance was generally well received. The film's box office success was an important accolade for those involved, and it helped to maintain the popularity of the Western genre in the 1970s. Charles Durning, a prominent actor in the 1970 movie There Was a Crooked Man, was a family man with three children, Michelle, G9, and Douglas Edward, from his first marriage. Before his show business career, Durning began in burlesque. On the other hand, Burgess Meredith, who also starred in the movie, had a military background, serving in the U.S. Army Air Corps during World War II, and holding the rank of captain by 1945. In summary, the movie featured two talented actors with diverse backgrounds, one a family man and former burlesque performer, and the other a military officer turned actor. During the filming of There Was a Crooked Man in 1970, Henry Fonda and Kirk Douglas shared a friendly rivalry on set. Douglas, known for his method acting, would often try to throw Fonda off by making loud noises or changing his lines at the last minute. Fonda, a seasoned actor, took it in stride and even managed to get a few laughs out of it. The film's director, Joseph L. Mankiewicz, was known for his meticulous attention to detail. He would often spend hours rehearsing scenes and discussing character motivations with the actors. This led to some tense moments on set, but ultimately resulted in a more polished final product. One of the film's most memorable scenes involved a daring escape from a prison camp. To achieve the desired effect, the crew built a massive set complete with a working water tower and guard towers. Stuntmen were brought in to perform the dangerous stunts, including a high altitude jump from the water tower. Despite the challenges of filming in the hot desert sun, the cast and crew remained in good spirits throughout the production. They often gathered together during breaks to share stories and jokes, creating a sense of camaraderie that translated onto the screen. One interesting anecdote involves Henry Fonda's horse, which he had brought from his own ranch. The horse, named Wild Thing, was known to be unpredictable and even bucked Fonda off during one scene. However, Fonda was a skilled rider and managed to stay on, much to the relief of the crew. Overall, the making of There Was a Crooked Man was marked by a spirit of collaboration and creativity. Despite the challenges and setbacks, the cast and crew remained dedicated to bringing Mankiewicz's vision to life, resulting in a film that has stood the test of time. Henry Fonda, a highly respected actor, had a military background and was recognized for his war service with a Bronze Star and a presidential citation. Despite his kind and honest persona on screen, he was often perceived as cold and aloof off screen. Warren Oates, known for his role as Sergeant Hulka in Stripes, is best recognized for his line Lighten Up, Francis, which has gained cult status. Although Oates was a prominent figure in the 60s and 70s, his impact is still felt today. The 1970 movie There Was a Crooked Man is often overlooked in film history, but it had a significant impact on future filmmaking. The film is known for its unique blend of comedy and western genres, which inspired similar films such as Blazing Saddles and Three Amigos. Its director, Joseph L. Mankiewicz, was already an established figure in Hollywood, but this movie showcased his ability to handle different genres with ease. The movie's protagonist, played by Kirk Douglas, is a charming and cunning outlaw who manipulates those around him. This character archetype can be seen in many later films, including The Sting and Ocean's Eleven. The film's screenplay, penned by David Newman and Robert Benton, is another aspect that left a mark on future filmmaking. Their witty dialogue and clever plot twists were influential in shaping the comedic style of many later films. There is a Crooked Man also boasts a star-studded cast, including Henry Fonda, Warren Oates, and Hume Cronin. Their performances helped elevate the film and set a standard for ensemble casts in Western comedies. The film's success paved the way for more unconventional Westerns, 
challenging the traditional image of the genre and opening up new possibilities for filmmakers. In conclusion, while There Was a Crooked Man may not be as celebrated as other films from the same era, its influence on future filmmaking is undeniable. Its innovative blend of genres, unique characters, and memorable dialogue continue to inspire filmmakers to this day. Hume Cronin, who played the role of Dudley Winner in the 1970 movie There Was a Crooked Man, directed his wife Jessica Tandy in a production of Tennessee Williams' earlier play Portrait of a Madonna. This led to her being cast as Blanche Dubois in Elia Kazan's Broadway production of A Streetcar Named Desire. Lee Grant, who played the character of Mistress Bullard in the film, has three grandsons through her daughter, actress Dinah Manoff. Charles Durning, who played the warden in There Was a Crooked Man, met his second wife Mary Ann Emilio while performing in the Broadway play that championship season. Henry Fonda, an accomplished actor known for his roles in films such as Twelve Angry Men, had a political stance against the Vietnam War. However, he was eventually convinced to go on a tour to support the servicemen, taking Polaroids and signing autographs. Interestingly, Fonda was once a registered Republican, according to his son Peter Fonda's memoir. Martin Gable, a versatile character actor, was the son of a jeweler and graduated from Lehigh University with a major in English. He trained for acting at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and began his career on stage in Chicago. Gable later became one of the original members of Orson Welles' Mercury Theatre Company. Henry Fonda, a Democrat for most of his life, experienced a six-year layoff from films during the early 1950s. Peter Fonda believes that his father's liberalism may have caused him to be gray-listed during this time. Despite this setback, Fonda continued to have a successful career in Hollywood. Kirk Douglas, a renowned actor, was honored with the Ellis Island Medal of Honor in 1986. Gene Evans, another accomplished actor, had a memorable experience with director Samuel Fuller. After filming The Steel Helmet, Fuller gave Evans the steel helmet with a bullet hole from the movie as a gift. Years later, at a retrospective of Fuller's work, Evans returned the helmet, leaving Fuller deeply moved. Burgess Meredith, known for his role as the Penguin in Batman, was the second choice for the part. Producers originally wanted Spencer Tracy, but he refused unless his character could kill Batman, an idea they rejected. Meredith graciously accepted the role, delivering a memorable performance. We'd love to hear about your memories and experiences related to the 1970 movie There Was a Crooked Man. This film has had a special place in the hearts of many cinema lovers. Did it leave a lasting impression on you? Or perhaps it introduced you to a new favorite actor? We encourage you to share your thoughts and stories with us. Tell us how this movie impacted you personally or influenced your perspective on cinema. Your engagement, whether it's through likes, shares, or comments, helps to create a vibrant community of film enthusiasts. And if you're not already a subscriber, consider hitting that button to stay updated on our cinematic explorations. We delve into a wide range of films, from the classics to the contemporary, and we'd love for you to join us on this journey. Your support and participation are invaluable to us. So, let's get the conversation.